I'm Melly. I'm Chris. And this is Beggars Believe, home of scams, shams, hoaxes, pranks, and charlatans, stories that you shouldn't believe because someone is lying. I did it. I did it. And I'll tell you what, this is the episode you are, you've been waiting for. I know, but you, you did the intro, so this has to be our final okay. episode. Like, you nailed it. No. This is it. <laughs> no. This is no. Okay. Uh, like the host or Melanie? Melanie. Okay. Yeah. Only it's 1992. So back then everybody called me Mimi. All right. Um, I don't know why that stopped. Um, I can bring it back. It's okay. I got brace or I got my braces off and everyone started calling me Melly. Uh, so you're riding around in a shopping cart surrounded by snack containers of high C ecto cooler, Dunkaroos and Scooby-Doo fruit snacks. This was also me at seven in 1992. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe for dinner, SpaghettiOs, followed by Ninja Turtle ice cream snacks where the eyeballs were gumballs. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm going so far back now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And it's me somewhere in my jelly shoes, you know, got to (laughs) get... Wow! <laughs> Have those little things in my hair that look like like I didn't know we were taking balls. a trip in the Wayback Machine. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Peabody. So your mom pushes up. Well, my mom pushes you to the yeah. checkout. You look up, and on a black and white tabloid, you spy a weird bulbous face, and the headline: Bat Boy Found in Cave. I vividly remember the first day I saw this as a kid in my grandparents' convenience store because they carried copies of the Sun. Now, because you were me, it, it wasn't the sun, it's the Weekly World News. Oh, right. That's what, yes. Weekly World News. Weekly, weekly yeah, World yeah. News. But because you're me, you're like, Mom, I want to see this book. And Mom says, you are not allowed to touch that book. <laughs> <laughs> that is pure trash. We are not doing that. No, 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 no. And so it is the forbidden fruit of your childhood uh, is what the heck is going on in the Weekly World News. Now, I know that you... See, I got to touch mine. You were allowed I got to, to touch read mine. the Weekly World News. <laughs> so yeah, bad boy. Uh, We're not, obviously, you know what's going on. I sure do. I can still picture that, like, vividly in my mind. Describe it! Because, you know, we might have people who can't. Because I feel like it's, like, this looming figure of, like, this, like, child, this, again, this bulbous-headed child with these, like, massive ears, correct? Mm -hmm. Like, kind of, like, lurching forward toward the front of the publication. Yeah. Grayscale. With with the pointy teeth. With the pointy teeth. It's like a mini Nosferatu. Yes. Poorly done Mini Nosferatu. Yes. Leering forward on the front of this publication, and especially at the time being a kid, I was under the assumption that all print was fact. So this horrified me. Like, I was, like, morbidly curious, because this was also the time that, like, a lot of my interest in horror was peaking. Yes. So I had to read this, because I was like, and my thought process, I thought I could befriend Bat Boy as a child and have, like, the coolest best friend ever. I, I would love that book. The, See, the, that's the, like the best children's book yeah, ever. The story like, forget of like, Vanicula, like <laughs> The story of little Chris and Bat Boy. Uh, Bat Boy. <laughs> so yeah, Bat Boy became the unofficial sort of mascot of the Weekly World News. A newspaper with widespread circulation in stores all over the country. Weekly, it spewed all sorts of makeup stories for a decade and made its way into pop culture before sort of collapsing in on itself. It stood out because it was printed in black and white had the most outrageous headlines, badly photoshopped images, oh, and yeah. stories featured on the cover, and by our childhood, everything you saw on it was completely untrue. <laughs> yeah, I learned that later. Yeah. Disappointingly just... so. Yeah, so you've described Bad Boy pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, he popped up again and again in Weekly World News, and um, I kind of went through and penned out a beef, brief biography Oh God, I was gonna I was gonna ask like how is Bat Boy doing today? Of the stories. Well it depends. Um we don't know today, but we do know um some psychics predictions of his future. So oh, we got that. Great, perfect. So very reliable sources. I mm-hmm. bet they found that on Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. We'll go into other stories that Weekly World News covered later, but the biography of Bat Boy as gleaned from whatever snippets I could find online because no one in their right mind is actually documenting this stuff. Supposedly found in a cave in West Virginia by a Dr. Ron Dillon, aged somewhere between three and five years old. He was kept in a lab where he couldn't eat human food, so he would, they would flood the lab with bugs and he ate his weight in them daily. He navigates with a high-pitched echo location and could move with super speed. He later escaped by breaking the padlock on his enclosure in September of 1992 and headed south, with researchers saying he might be in Kentucky or Virginia. 
they asked for any reports of sightings of Bat Boy, and they got them. <laughs> See, honestly, this whole thing could have been avoided if they had just provided more enrichment in the enclosure. Yeah, like, just not not 30 pounds of mosquitoes, mosquitoes a day. Mosquitoes, <laughs> yeah, because that sucks. <laughs> So, sightings were reported all over America, with Bat Boy biting a child in Florida, biting the ear off a man in Massachusetts, until he was finally sighted in North Carolina. They attempted to apprehend him, and he bit off an agent's finger in the struggle and ate it. <laughs> this led to a series of events of him escaping and being recaptured on numerous occasions uh, by the government, and a bounty hunter named Jim Deadeye Stuttered, who planned to skin and taxidermy Bat, Bat Boy. Jim Deadeye Stuttered. Bat Boy was even declared dead at one point. A second Bat Boy was discovered, and there was a fake Bat Boy impersonator roaming around at one point. At some point... Sir, a second Bat Boy has just hit the presses. Yes. <laughs> and it's one of those, like, you know, they would make up stuff and drop plot points. It didn't matter. At some point, he slowly began to learn to speak and became less of a bitey, feral toddler, unfortunately. Uh, and there's a lot of real-world changes to the authors happening as that happens which we'll go into in a bit. Hmm. Um, as he calmed down, they found out that his favorite band was Synced, and he really liked Jefferson Timberlake. His favorite superhero was Spider-Man, and his favorite cereal was Count Chocula. So he's got good taste all except for cereal. Fair enough. What was your sugar cereal of choice? Uh, usually Fruity Pebbles. Uh. I liked, like, the, like, I, honestly, that should have been, like, one of my first signs about being gay as a kid. Is the Fruity Pebbles. It's the Fruity Pebbles and also, like, being really into Goliath from Gargoyles. No, there you like, go. There you go. Yeah. I don't know which one is a more larger sign. My family, it was, if I went to my one grandmother's house, it was the knockoff uh, Lucky Charms. Oh, right. We didn't have heart sharp stars and horseshoes. We had, like, circles of various shades of gray. Yeah. And uh, at my other grandmother's, it was Honey Smacks, which was oh, kind of the, yeah. If wow. there was any humidity, it would just become, like, a brick. A brick. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Bat Boy, sorry, <laughs> detour there. Uh, these are the last stories where he was treated as having childlike tendencies, and he went and joined the army for a while. Oh yeah, as you, you know, yeah. as you do. Yeah, he fell in love with Jenna Bush, and his age becomes muddles as he was described as what has described as a batty mitzvah. <laughs> batty mitzvah, <laughs> and you leer at me. Yeah, you know what? That was a pun. Batty mitzvah. Yeah, that that's a good one. And no. by good, I mean terrible. Yeah, there we go. No, no, no. Good puns are terrible. Yeah. Terrible no, no, puns mm -hmm. are, are good. He went missing at one point, and in this time running around stole cars, including a Mini Cooper, went on joy rides, and was having, accused of having an affair with Jennifer Lopez. Despite this, he started training with the Marines to take out Osama bin Laden. Totally separate, he was invited to drive a space shuttle in the same issue as a letter to the editor suggested he might be related to the Teletubbies. He was then involved in the U.S. troops taking Saddam Hussein, and there were plans to clone him. He sniffed out a cache of weapons left by terrorists, and because of it, was slated to be knighted by Queen Elizabeth II. And this is my favorite Photoshop picture of him, because he's still, like, wide mouth, butt-ass naked except for the diaper, only wearing, like, this ermine cloak and a crown. <laughs> this sounds like a Renaissance painting, yeah. honestly. His loyalties must have laid with the United States, so he attempted to run as John Kerry's vice president and then tried out for American Idol. When this didn't work out, he decided to marry Britney Spears, causing fans to go on a hunger strike. A cure for his battiness was... Ba what? His We're going to call it bachelism. I like that. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Was suggested in 2004, but rejected by Bat Boy, who seemed to be living a full life despite his bat-like tendencies. This is just the plot of X-Men. Yes. Now, he should have been a bat teen, a bat teen? or a bat adult by this yes. point, but we're still, yeah. But there was another secondary character who popped up from time to time known as Boy Bat, and their relationship was being questioned. He then decided to move to Argentina to help then plummeting value of the Argentinian peso in an article that featured him wearing a sombrero, a bat sombrero. <laughs> In 2007, Mitney Romney visited Bat Boy's cave with a pro campaign promise to keep spelunkers safe from monsters. And a report from a time traveler says that in 2028, Bat Boy will in fact be president. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to that. If we go by the ti timeline, Bat Boy would be in his mid-30s. Correct. Well on his way to Bat Middle-Aged. Yep. <laughs> uh, and in real life, um, had a bro off-Broadway play based on him. Uh, was featured in comics, uh, but the comics are not considered canon to the Bat Boy oh, story. Oh, fair enough. All right. Because apparently someone cared enough for that. So, yeah. <laughs> it's just fascinating to me that this tiny spectacle of an article 
evolved into this entire mythos mm-hmm. and kept mm-hmm. showing back up and in integrating popular culture of the time. Oh yeah, that's I that's the thing that, that is fascinating about this whole thing is is it's pop culture of the 80s and 90s through a mirror darkly. Yeah. Like you you totally can look at it and it's like, oh this is what is going on, but it's this other world version of things. That's just such a an interesting lens to mm-hmm. display all these events through is Bat Boy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And we will get back to the actual creation of Batboy the character in a minute, but I want to go to the creation of the magazine that gave him life first. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, please do. So the Weekly World News was started in 1979, originally in L- Lantana, Florida. It was... That explains everything. It's a Florida publication. <laughs> <laughs> it was launched by Generosa Pope Jr., who was the creator of the National Enquirer. Oh, there were... Okay, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pope was an MIT graduate and worked for the CIA's Psychological Warfare Unit in 1950 and had rumors of mafia connections. I have so much more context now. <laughs> That's kind of where I was when I read that. Mm-hmm. The National Enquirer was known for gory headlines, with Pope saying his inspiration was watching people rubberneck at car accidents. Originally, the Weekly World News was created to continue utilizing black and white presses that had been right. when publications converted to color. Uh, he It's claimed that Pope just felt bad that the black and white presses were a family-owned business and were about to go out of business, so he was invented. He found a, re- a use for them. Fair yeah, he literally enough. just found a reason for yeah. them to exist. Um, in earlier days, the journal was in semi-factual. Uh, they had what they would do is have people pick weird small articles from newspaper all around the country and just pack them into an article. Like it was a okay, weird news yeah. compilation. Clippers would go through an eight foot tall pile of newspaper, picking out whatever the strangest yeah. things they could find. It was strange, but mostly true with a whole lot of celebrity gossip and pop culture notes kind of interwoven. In this era, it actually got into a fair amount of controversy, not only because many of this Articles dealt with things like religious figures, but also in 1989, it posted pictures from the real autopsy of Ted, Bu- Ted Bundy. Oh my gosh, I didn't mm-hmm. know that. Jeez. Mm-hmm. The person from the medical examiner's office who leaked the pictures was actually charged for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I understandably so. But the problem is, through all this, the guiding principle for the journal had become, don't fact check your way out of a good article. Hmm. So... There was what if that's like our new little thing? Like, don't fact check, check. your way out of a good listen. See, I, I, I want the stuff that I'm saying at least to be true. <laughs> fact check your way into a good listen. Yeah, yeah. There fact we yourself, go. check your way into a great listen. Yes. So you have this ever increasing amount of embellishing, sensationalizing, creative writing, and then just wholesale making up stories. Until the publication was all just the wildest fiction they could come up with. The more outlandish the claims, the more the circulation seemed to increase through the late 90s and early 2000s. Berger stated in the beginning, we were very careful about facts. And then several years later, we're writing about space aliens, Bigfoot and Bat Boy. All right. Printing of the newspaper moved to Boca Raton in the 90s. I like that the Weekly World News is coming from the mouth of the rat. Yes. (laughs) It works on several levels here. Many of the writers for the Weekly and World News came from backgrounds that were actually in traditional news reporting and just wanted to create the humdrum and flex their creative wings. There were reporters who had started on the Washington Post and the New York Times. Joe Berger, who I mentioned earlier, uh, had been a White House correspondent. I mean, honestly, like when I started undergrad, I went into professional writing and I was really hoping to get into journalism. Mm -hmm. And the few stints that I had, just kind of like feeling out the field, it was so droll or so to the point that like, if it doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead. I was like, I don't want to do this. If I had been offered something like this, I would have jumped at that. That would have been fantastic. So the longtime editor and creative genius was named Eddie Klontz, and he was a 10th grade dropout from North Carolina. Uh, He described their roles at, at the Weekly World News by saying we were the Beatles of fake journalism. Yeah, this is basically... You're, this is how you shine with fan fiction in the 90s. Like, mm-hmm. this is your route. While other such newspapers would publish a disclaimer, Weekly World News played it straight until 2004 when it added a note that the reader should suspend disbelief for the sake of enjoyment. Uh, the environment at the actual publication is described as being really fun with people yelling out ideas, laughing and creating such a ruggish that it disturbed their neighbors. Lind uh, says, there's days when I would leave work with my stomach and face hurting from laughing all day with ideas being kicked around. Eddie Klontz would actually stand on his death with desk with a squirt gun and squirt the writers. It kind of sounds like a blast. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, who needs the Google offices? I want this. Yeah. 
Uh, Salavone, who previously worked, worked for the New York Daily News, said it was electrifying every day you'd go into the office and someone make, would make you scream with laughter. He also described his work saying, if somebody calls me up and says their toaster is p talking to them, I don't refer them to professional help. I say put the toaster on the phone. I'm, I've seen Ghostbusters, too. You can do that. <laughs> I've seen your Ghostbusters boudoir shots. Yeah, you have. <laughs> Has nothing to do with toasters. Just had to throw it in there. Um, so stories were mostly in, loosely inspired by real world news and heavily inspired by whatever the news and pop culture of the moment was, like we yeah, said. Yeah, right. It's a parallel world uh, of politics and a parallel world of pop culture. They took sort of stories submitted by readers a lot as well. Uh, no matter how outlandish, ran with them without a bit of fact checking. Eddie Klontz would give examples like, if we get a story about a guy who thinks he's a vampire, we take him straight to his word. And if a guy calls and says Bigfoot ran away with his wife, we write it straight as an AP story. How much the Weekly World News articles were believed, though, is really up for debate. Derek Klontz, who was Eddie's brother and the managing editor, said, it's my belief that in the 80s and 90s, most people believe most of the material most of the time, but they didn't really think that right. people believed Correct. it later on. Yeah, uh, Most people saw it as a parody. They worked hard at creating incredulousness by, like, presenting the articles straight. They wrote them the same as though they were still working for a real right. publication. Uh, and the actual news background of the people who were writing really helped. One of their tricks was to cite experts. And sometimes they got real scientists and experts to respond. The name of the tabloid was generic enough that it wouldn't necessarily always register to the people that they were calling that it was that bat boy article right. in a magazine. So they would give some sort of statement or blurb that they could run with. Uh, when that didn't work out, they made up a name of a scientist and would just quote it. Or they would say that it was a baffled scientist. Baffled scientists can't understand. Um, it was used so often it became a running joke around the office that somewhere there was the Academy of Baffled Scientists. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. When the writers stated they couldn't get a grasp on, the, grasp on their own demographic, they were kind of just throwing stuff against the wall uh, yeah, and seeing what sticks. Six. But they did have running focus groups uh, where they would put out trial covers to see like which one would actually That's... sell the best and whatnot. Uh, and they also ran everything by a law firm to make sure they never quite stepped over the uh, line. Oh, I, you know what? Okay. I, it sounds like they had everything at least in line enough to be doing this at like ground level. Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Um, so Bob Lind, who was a writer for a decade, said, I have no shame. I make no apologies. It's not something I try to hide. And Derek Lang later stated that everything in my stories was fake, you know, depending on how you define fake. <laughs> so back to Bat Boy. Yeah, okay, yes. Give me... So this is the environment... The genesis of Bat Boy. Yes, this is the environment that birthed Bat Boy. Yes, an idea from a squirt gun. Yes. Don't ever say that again. All right. Um, so he was created by editor Dick Culpa. He was supposed to be creating a one-off image of a space alien baby, but everyone in the Weekly World News loved the image so much they decided to do more of it, and they looked at it and basically said, "That's a bat. That's Bat Boy. <laughs> it's Bat Boy." The image almost didn't happen because the computer that Culpa was using to edit the image kept crashing. Uh, the original was was actually a picture of a baby edited to have giant eyes, pointed ears, inspired by Spock because it was going oh, to be yeah. a space alien. Shortly thereafter, Bob Lynn took over the story. Uh, he was sort of this overwhelmed, freak out, feral toddler. Uh, he was supposed like to be like Bad Boy. No, 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 no. The, the character was this, <laughs> not Bob Lynn. <laughs> you don't get very far as a writer who's fighting people. <laughs> well, in certain circles, <laughs> Anne Rice did it. <laughs> She's dead, so we can say that. Uh, <laughs> the image was. And the, the image of the of his cover was a bestseller, so they yeah. just kept running with it. Later takeovers afterwards, Bat Boy's stories got more weirder and more political, more t topical, and less sort of this sort of rogue, overwhelmed figure that exists in our world. He basically got less feral and apparently in a few years will be running for president. Other than Bat Boy, they had other repeat characters who would write advice columns, including relationship, financial, medical, and psychics. Everything I read, it was terrible advice. Uh, there was ah. a frequent column by a, a character named Ed Anger, who parodied a angry conservative viewpoints and would just be totally normal rhetoric today from everything I yes. saw. And I have a list of some of the more notable stories that I came up with. Okay. That just amused the hell out of me. But let's talk about the fall of the magazine before we get there. They, they, they always said that they didn't have a slant. They had a slant. They had a slant. Yeah. yeah, they were very slanty. It was incredibly slanty. Slantier than a non-ADA-approved wheelchair <laughs> ramp. 
So the newspaper went out of print when circulation dropped below 90,000 in 2007. Okay, wow. Uh, a new owner had made changes uh, and in, brought in strictly comedy writers instead of that sort of mm. straight-laced AP writers. Uh, it changed the tone. Yeah. They also added, started adding comic strips. So it started um, drifting more to like Mad Magazine kind of territory yeah, rather than exactly, the speculative. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It was later purchased by a company named Batboy LLC. Uh, was moved online, and it's led to a few situations where fake articles from weekly little news have been repeated elsewhere, in fact, and, you know, more on modern days. It still exists in some form. Sometimes online occasionally makes something into print with a Kickstarter. Interesting. Okay. And I read all about this in a few books online, one being Batboy Lives, uh, which is this great compilation of a couple of things. There's another one that's a history of weekly real news and then online articles. Um, I'll drop the context to the books I used down in the description. So, weekly world news. Let's All have right. some fun with this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Are these? Is this my list? No, no, no. This is my list. All right. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. my list of the stuff that was in the weekly world news. Yes. The reason that they were really so successful, according to themselves, was that they had a stated anti-discrimination policy for clones, androids, and aliens. A alien named It Glispe from the planet Neblutron said it's really the only place on Earth I feel comfortable working because they're very supportive of the alien community. Hey, that was better than your French. You know, thanks, thanks. <laughs> um, they also apparently reported that uh, 12 senators were from outer space. Oh, yeah, no, that, that's true. Mm -hmm. Elvis repeatedly said to be alive. Uh, articles written about his roommates, lovers, and professions. Huh. They held a contest with mail-in ba ballots on who to clone first. And the winners were John F. Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, FDR, Ronald Reagan, and Millard Fillmore. That's... <laughs> Jefferson was a close sixth place, Millard but Millard Fillmore. Fillmore. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, they were said to have accelerated a a aging and were enrolled in a special school with Fillmore being picked on by the other clones. Wait, did this give birth to Clone High, one of my favorite TV series? <laughs> I don't know. Series? Does that TV series have Millard Fillmore? No, but it has Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> okay. They had a space alien who was a flasher in Las Vegas, uh, and it said that his private parts spin like a mixer and were like a dentist drill. Uh, I'd go to that show. <laughs> I would, too. <laughs> Burlesque gets dry after a while. No. Uh, exposed Karl Marx is one of the Marx brothers. Whoa. They really had it out for Hillary Clinton. Accused her of wanting to paint the White House blue, adopting an alien baby, and having an affair with a space alien named Pallad. Pallad. Pallad was a repeat character who apparently was involved in every presidential election since the 80s, with photos of each of the presidents, and went on to work for the Bush administration. One article was written about a man who was Bigfoot's love slave. There was another... Goals, honestly. It's not, not changed this into, like, Wood, the magazine, or the podcast. <laughs> uh, another that police had shot and killed Bigfoot. However, they were released in opposite order. So the guy who was Bigfoot's love slave and, or was released after. After, the, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, later there was a Bigfoot hooker working in Washington, D.C. All right. Uh, and the book I got those details from, The Batman Lives, Bigfoot Centerfold. <laughs> We'll talk later. <laughs> Santa Claus found frozen into a block of ice, which uh, canceled Christmas. And then Captain America emerged afterwards. <laughs> the Earth's core is made of candy because so many children drop sweets and ice cream that all the sugar soaked in. So the center of the Earth is essentially a jawbreaker. <laughs> a giant gumball just <laughs> waiting to be crunched. There were pizzas delivered to the Last Supper with Judith picking pepperoni. You know, I would think that the controversial choice would be pineapple. See, that's a, that's the thing that like that a lot of historians and especially like religious archivists don't understand. All the translations that they've been trying to do, like Judas, it wasn't thir it wasn't thirty coins; it was thirty pepperoni. <laughs> they had crop circles appear in a man's chest hair. Oh, undead creatures like vampires demanded the right to take out life insurance, which George Bush totally against. <laughs> They they kept using giant bugs, uh, and they had a twenty pound twenty three pound grasshopper and a twenty three pound high housefly. I don't know why it kept being twenty three. Maybe somebody was really into Michael Jordan at the time. That's... I don't know. Uh, babies were said to be born with everything from a wooden leg, false teeth, a tattoo, or a mustache. So they were just reincarnations of like George Washington. <laughs> Either that or a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Porn-based spam and fake Viagra ads were actually being sent by aliens in an attempt to seduce women on Earth. Yeah, Earth Girls are easy. I've yeah. seen that movie. <laughs> I have too, because it was on Comedy Central constantly when we were kids. Correct. Ventriloquist dummy kept talking after his puppeteer was in a coma and would hit on the nurses. 
There was a satellite that took pictures of heaven, which was a smudge with a sort of Greek building. But the Soviets actually beat us to the discovery. Oh, of course they did, yeah. They published the predictions of Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Who was Nostradamus's idiot brother. Yep. Yeah. And the moon, circling back to our second episode, yeah. repeated subject. Apollo 11 on the first moon landing was found beer cans on the moon, and subsequent photos of the first moon landing found garden gnomes and lawn flamingos. <laughs> the moon's rays turned the astronauts into werewolves, and that's the actual reason that we haven't gone back. See, I just gotta go to the moon. I just gotta go to the moon. There's so much cool stuff on the moon. I like lunar garden gnomes. That just makes me happy. Yeah, now being tended. There's something vaguely so like, cottage core like sci fi about that. I, like that, honestly, like that's that's the film we need. That's the massive summer blockbuster that would just take it by storm if we want to like really go full lunar cycle here. Yeah. You know, American werewolf on the moon. Like, you know, we've done London. We've done all that that jazz, that mess. Put them on the moon. American werewolf on the moon. But, yeah. I, I think the thing that fascinates me, like we said about it being, like, it, it, it matches up with so much pop culture at the time. Yeah. But also just, I, I don't know. But I guess I guess that also ties into, it was integrating with pop culture so well because they had these, like, classically trained journalists and AP writers working there rather than these comedy writers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who would probably be more apt to, like, create, like sketches in and around these sorts of things. Yeah. These people who are like, I would report on this normally. Yeah. So I know the facts, the details. Let's integrate. And and, and also just knowing the formatting, the choice of wording that would be used, it, it really helped. Yeah, it, it was fascinating. And like I said, this was not something I was like completely forbidden to read as a kid. So this was kind of a fun thing for me. I, I also liked that it was back when things like conspiracy theories were fun. Yeah, yeah, yes. And yes. not, not, you know, terrifying people in the streets. But yeah, when it was, okay, a conspiracy theory is X-Files or Deus Ex, right. you know, the video game. And not real world. And ironically, like, the last time I could say I can think that is, is Gravity Falls. Cool. Which ironically yeah, has I, Bat Boy in the I, intro. That's why I was thinking about, like, the lawn gnomes on the moon, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's, that's very Gravity Falls, falls. you know. But yeah. where we could actually kind of have fun with things still, you know. Without it being, like end all, mm -hmm. catastrophic, mm -hmm. end of times, darkness, everything's sad. Yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't really like uh, conspiracy theories anymore. They I killed know, the vibe. I they know. went all Zack Snyder on conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad it is. So that was, that was, that was a fun little, yeah, a fun little romp. No, that was a great little romp. I have the to jelly say, shoes really put me Oh, there the you mindset. go. I put you in the mindset. I have to say that when I was going through things, the the moment that Bat Boy closed his mouth in those video or in those images, he jumped the shark. Yes, that was that yep. was it for me. It was like, up, oh, no, no, yep. no, he needed to be open mouthed and ready to bite. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I got for this one. All right. Well, take it from this side of the microphone. Don't believe everything you hear. This is Beggar's Belief. Do you want to talk about where you can find us? Oh yeah. Also, gotta <laughs> plug our socials here. <laughs> Because I just got that information. We are on Instagram as Beggar's Belief Podcast, all one word. We are on all of the major places you can find podcasts as Beggar's Belief. And if you have anything you want to write to us, especially good words of encouragement, or maybe you've cited Bat Boy recently and you're missing an <laughs> appendage, you can email us at beggarsbeliefpodcast at gmail.com. Yay! Now I'm going to go to the